poppin' is your boy Mike with hours. Okay, for my real hip hop heads only. Unless your internet been broke for the past three years, then you know that the movement known as Griselda has been on a steady march towards complete domination of this sport we revere called hip hop. Clearly, Benny the Butcher has seen his own stock rise exponentially over the past year and a half while Conway the Machine and West Side Gun have been letting off rounds left and right. The movement, which began in upstate New York, has now metastasized and has grown into a seemingly terminal illness for all those not associated with this incredibly prolific squad of trappers slash MCs. The next wave of the Griselda assault is upon us, and it arrives in the form of the Black Soprano family, a team of lyrical marksmen capable of inflicting immense damage on soundscapes as well as anyone brave enough to call themselves opposition. One such member of this formidable crew is Hartford, Connecticut's own Fuego Bass. His gruff and straightforward deliverance of street narratives is not only a promulgation of respect for the game that has brought his name to prominence, but also includes carefully worded warnings for any and all who doubt the resolve of the collective he so aggressively represents. His is a story of what was not supposed to be. He had been written off as incorrigible, dangerous, and unpredictable. A man who'd been overlooked in favor of those whose names are stylized in neon. But those who pronounced his death prematurely will be shocked to find him passing them in the HOV lane as they look left. Leave aside the window dressing, the foreign whips, the Goyard accessories, and the Balenciaga footwear. The bars are there or else he would not be seated where he is at this moment. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on a Mike Power Show, that dude peeping the room and you. From the corner before all hell breaks loose, a man whose voice reverberates with the confidence that screams, my destiny shall not be impeded upon. A bomb in the backpack and the fire from the nozzle. Hartford, Connecticut, get the fuck on your feet for the guy your Uncle Ben told you to stay the fuck away from. Make some noise. Fuego Base is in the building. Fuego. Mike, what's up, Mike? What's poppin'? What's good, brother? How you doing? Man, I'm doing gravy. It's, it's an honor to have you on the show. Let's get right to it. Um, you outside. You on Hartford right now? Yeah, hell yeah. I'm on Barber right now. You on Barber right now, outside. Right now. We outside with I met you face to face at the House of Blues. Um, you actually recognized me, which made me feel good. And you was you was just really, really cool to me, so I appreciate that. Um yeah. Am I wrong about this or did I see you sitting on the stage by the DJ booth taking a nap during that show at the House of Blues? I might have been. <laughs> but you had put high as hell. You had put in work right before that, though. You had that spot where Benny bring you out and you just drop bars on the crowd. They go crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I usually like go like, you know, chill after that. Like, bro, bro, don't need me. He's a superhero. That's facts. Uh, I heard your name a few years ago. Um, I thought you was nice, but I thought you had more in you. Your bars are crazy sharp now. Um, what do you attribute that improvement to? What happened? I'm a rapper now. <laughs> <laughs> like I really rap now Like back then I was still fucking around I was in the streets You, you know the story yeah. Like I've been fucking with bro and them Like I went to jail twice and shit like that You know what I mean Like I was out here fucking around I wasn't really I wasn't really on that shit I was getting a little bit of change Doing other shit And I was content with that But then like the second time I got locked up It's like bro Like man you don't even got to do this shit So I came home with that mentality Like I don't do shit but rap and uh, you made some noise with the song Narcan and the Trap. I played that on my show. This ain't what the clowns like. The black thoughts so f This is what it would sound like. Gotta find this fee off a veteran hooker. Left out of Phoenix because I let my cousin Devin book her. Crazy yeah. track. Listen, somebody in the comment section on that song on YouTube said that that was the most responsible trap song ever. Do you oh, ever... Yeah, yeah. We don't want to lose our folks. This shit ain't about losing our folks. This shit about taking care of each other. You actually had Narcan in the trap? Yeah, hell yeah. You need that shit. Like the last time I was just out here, somebody dropped. I had the Narcan. 
niggas know like 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 the, like the folks know what to do. Like we 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 we, we been pressing that. You ever had to apply Narcan yourself? Nah, I ain't gonna do it myself. Somebody gonna do it though. Got you. Um, on that song, you make reference to your mom being ten years sober. Can you talk about the journey with your mom, or what she was going through, and how it affected you? Shit, man, that's my that's my right head. Like that's my hobby. That's my everything. So, like, yeah, you know I mean, I lost my mother December fourteenth. Yeah, you know I mean. So, oh my god, I'm so like, sorry. That shit changed you. Yeah. But like before she left, she said she like, man, nigga, you better be rapping somewhere. So that's what I'm doing. And you got it. You have a song. Um, you have an album, a couple albums. One album is called, um, what is it called? Tell Mama I'm a Rapper. Tell mama, yeah, Tell Mama I'm a Rapper. And then Tell Mama I'm a Rapper still. Is that a different album, right? Okay. Yeah, that's a different joint. So talk to me about the concept of those album titles. Why was, the, why was that title important? Shit, Mama thought this shit was a scam. <laughs> my main thing we was going fucking be rapping and shit you know what I mean we was doing other shit like my mother was aware of some of the things we was doing and shit so it's like man nah you really gonna rap like y'all gonna get that shit up finally so I had to prove that shit to her first and foremost you know what I mean and uh how did you connect with Benny um we got a mutual friend he posted me on um Instagram and then we start thinking from them. Like Benny liked what he saw. We start chopping it up. And we became friends. You know what I, mean? I don't think like me and that nigga talk rap for a long time, like when, once we met. You know what I mean? Let me ask you this. Let's get deep into this. What what makes Black Soprano family so special? They making so much noise right now. It's a special crew. What makes them special? Everybody dumping. Everybody's dumping. Yeah. Everybody's dumping. Like, you know what I mean? Rick High is like. One of the most consistent niggas ever. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. He he ain't hungry. Like you can hear that shit all in him. You feel what I'm saying? Lovey dumping. Camino special. Like Camino do so much different shit. Like that kid's amazing. You feel what I'm saying? Young world, amazing. Like, like that nigga made like the Buffalo Bills anthem or some shit like that. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, Benny is a great talent scout. Uh, I saw you tore down on Sway. Backstage at the awards, trying to surf KC. How these hoes don't only fans, but don't got AC. I'm almost off the tour, hope the sales surge. Cause my daughter deserve better than a jailbird. If you build it, they gon' have to come. In the buck 50 of gram, sound sweet like magic, son. How did that moment feel being in that spot where so many legends have put in work? Shit, it felt like it was our time to, to be legend. That's what it felt like. Nigga like me, bro. Like, even when he asked me, I'm like, bro, I'm just happy to be here. But Sway didn't give you an intro like me. Is that correct? Yo, you just gave me the flyest intro ever. Thank you, Fuego. I <laughs> appreciate you, I might, bro. I might want to come out to that shit at a show. You don't have to, bro. BSF just dropped the album Long Live DJ Shay. Hell yeah. And you was the that shit out. Man, crazy. And you was the first verse on there. You appear on the intro with West Side Gun. What kind of honor is that to lead off the DJ Shea tribute next to the Man, Fly that God? Shit, that shit's a blessing, bro. That shit's a blessing. That shit, so, but like, I did that shit so fast. <laughs> they sent the vocals over there. Me and the guys was in the studio going crazy. I did that shit fast. Like, that shit was, like, I knew it was go time. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate West for even. Like, you know, he's selective. You feel what I'm saying? So that says a lot. Like the fact that the nigga even allowed that to happen. You, feel what I'm you knew you was going to be on the, you knew that was going to be the intro. Yeah, I knew. And Fly God himself tapped you on the shoulder. Did it come through Benny or you talked to, to West Side Gun yourself? He was like, yo, I want you on this intro. Me and West had like talked before then. Like I knew West was fucking with my shit. Like one night he just pulled me to the side like, bro, you fire and shit. So I was hyped up off of that. That was enough for me. Then, I, then they sent that shit back. I'm like, oh, shit. You feel me? It's go time, nigga. Let's get it, fat boy. Turn up. You on the inside of this whole thing that's going down and everybody across the globe, across the globe is watching. What kind of genius is West Side Gun? Because I've been calling him a genius for like over two years. Man, that nigga is like, he the fly guy. Like the aura speaks for itself. Like that nigga's different. Did he give you, you any advice man. that you could share with us? Man, go hard. That's the only advice I can share with niggas is go hard. I go hard in the paint. Like, I quit, quit 
the streets and just went hard at this shit and it's starting to pay off. Like, you got to go hard. My boss work hard, so I'm not like, that nigga's always working. Every time I'm around my boss, that nigga working until four or five, six in the morning. So I don't do no different. The, the song First Day Out, obviously you was behind the wall. How long did you do on them couple stretches? This shit, them shits was light, really, honestly. Because I got caught with a strap, so I took two years for the gun. And um, you could do 50%. And it was corona and shit. I had corona, all type of shit. So they let me out in 10 months. And then I went back for maybe like five or six months on the violation. And what helped you pass the time when you was in there? Shit, chilling. Like knowing I had something to look forward to, honestly. Like the second time, because the second time I kind of made my mind up like, I'm straight. I ain't going to jail and all that shit no more. Like, I'm going to start really moving different. You feel what I'm saying? Because on the video, first day out, is that actual footage of you leaving the joint or did y'all have to recreate that? No, nah, that was me really getting out. Yeah, that's dope. I was really getting out of that motherfucker. That's why I'm like, yo, come on, hurry up. Because that I ain't going to lie. I was sitting in the fucking bullpen by myself for like two hours. Because like the lieutenant got to sign off on your shit. Like that, that's the last signature before they let you out the door. So I'm like, man, what the fuck? Like, because how they play around here, like they'll let you get to the door and serve your ass a warning or something. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, yo, what the fuck is going on? So I'm just sitting there like, fuck. And then, cause then they came back in there like, yo, like, what you famous or some shit? Cause it was cameras and shit outside. So I'm like, man, nigga, I'm doing my shit. Like, what's up? Nigga, like, let me the fuck out of here. When you got out, did you know in your heart that this day would come, that you would get all this respect in the rap game? Or were you ever nervous being that it's so hard for people coming out the joint? No, I wasn't ever nervous about this shit. Like this, this shit strict. <laughs> it's good stress. Like even when I am stressed out, it's good stress. This shit, all right. It's been worse, you know what I mean? So fuck it. Like I signed up for this shit. But I was never nervous. Like I know who I am. I know what I do. Like my shit fire. Yeah. Um, have you always been in love with the sport we call hip hop, or is this just a way to keep you out the trap? I was in love with the streets, bro. I'm starting to love hip hop now. Yeah. Honestly. Like I always loved it from a fan perspective. Like you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I would listen to that shit, like, when I'm in jail, that's how I got through them bids and shit. I was doing bids when I was a kid. Like, I listen to every fucking rap CD ever. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, that was always the soundtrack in my life when I was running around in the streets. It'd be, like, certain rap shit. Like, i never forget. Like, I love hip-hop. But that's from a fan perspective. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, me, like, doing this shit, like, as a profession and, like, my livelihood depending on it. Like, that shit new to me, bro. Man, that's a that's a big ass BSF chain you got on. I'm so focused on getting the interview done right. I missed a big piece. How long you didn't had that piece? You wasn't wearing that at House of Blues when I seen you. No, hell no. I probably had some shit on though. No, you did. Yeah, <laughs> but not that one. Shit on though. But no, it ain't like this, bro. This special, man. Like this is like, you know what I mean? Like this shit means more. Like is that 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 BSF chain is like, and that them Grizel them BSF chains. Them getting the clout like the rock chains used to get back in the day right now. Like this shit opened up a bunch of doors for me. Like, and I'm like just thankful. Like, nigga won't even know, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, um, Benny, 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 that nigga, man. Like, Benny changing lives. Man, that boy. That boy. Listen. Benny changing lives. Like, 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 nigga. <laughs> Benny done put a piece on the nigga like me. So it's up on, over Benny. Word up. Now let's get Whoever elephant don't fuck in with Benny. I don't fuck with them. It's that simple. <laughs> Cause he got he got some problems. I was, well, I ain't gonna say he got some problems, but he didn't have some back and forth with a guy that we know. You know what I mean? No, Benny, Benny don't got no problems. Benny a Benny a humble dude and a good dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I respect it. I respect it. But it's some back yeah. and forth online though, right? Yeah, I don't know nothing about that. Like I said, Benny a good nigga. Like, 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 I never seen Benny upset, really. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Benny take care of, like, a lot of people. That's all I know about Benny. Like, Benny is a good nigga. And I, and I mean that. Oh, I respect it. Um, Like, if somebody got an issue with Benny, like, I would believe, like, that person is probably wrong. Like, I don't, I, I don't see that brother do nothing but hold it down. And the elephant in the room... Recently, you just made a diss record on Talib Kweli. We no longer let things 
slide. Fuck Talib Kweli, it must be powder in his bean pies. Rarely do I broadcast issues, but fuck Chris Webby too. He and that bitch that's on the podcast with you, probably somewhere off Barber with a long ass pistol. Uh, when these rappers get washed, they do coke next. Disrespect won't be tolerated, and that's most death. I know what he did, but can you explain to the people what prompted you to have to make this record about Talib Kweli? Like, niggas be disrespectful. And we've been getting disrespected for a long time. About and Connecticut. we ain't never really, like, had the, um... Nah, nah, nah. And we ain't never really had, like, the motherfucking, like, representation here. Like, now we do. And he was in an interview on a podcast so gonna, or something. We're going to demand a little bit of motherfucking respect around here. Straight up. Talib said, fuck Connecticut in an interview. Yeah, why? Why would you do that? Connecticut Connecticut is a part of this hip-hop shit, bro. Connecticut is a place where a lot of niggas come and get money. Niggas been feeding You gotta come there to get money. Here. That's been, uh, Fuego, that been going on for a very long time. You feel what I'm saying? Niggas come down. Gotta go to Connecticut. Niggas come down here and get their chicken. Sometimes when they can't even get booked in New York or somewhere else. Yeah. We'll fuck with you. So you can't do that, bro. Talib is not known as a street dude. Um, are we content to keep this on wax or should Talib make a phone call before coming to Connecticut? Talib can call whoever the fuck he want. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Like, 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 I'm just saying something back to, I'm reacting to something he did. Like, I don't even know nothing about that guy. Like, or like, listen to that nigga or nothing. Like, that nigga ain't no legend where I'm from, bro. I don't know shit about that shit. He just said what he said. I said what I said. Like, it ain't like, I don't, one no, like, I don't want to hurt that nigga or that nigga to hurt me or none of that weird shit. Do you think he has what it takes to respond to you on wax? I'll fuck that nigga up. <laughs> Damn. He don't want to see, he don't want to smoke. He don't want those bars. I don't know. He be chilling though. Like he, like he used to rap a long time ago, I guess, and shit. So like he probably ain't on it like that. But it's like, I did, I did that. So niggas won't really be on no wanting to really press old head and shit like that. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like I'm around street people, bro. Like that was this, like, like that was disappointed in them when he did that shit and shit like that. I could rap. Some of these folks can. You feel what I'm saying? So I just rap. All right, so are you going? Are you going to do this like Pac did? Don't hit him up. Go at most deaf, common, and, and high tech in them, and just get the. <laughs> nah, I don't know them niggas. I don't, like I don't got no issue with them niggas. I, I, I know about Common. Like, I listen to Common. Um, like, Common, Common ain't say fuck CT. High Tech ain't say fuck TT, right? Not at all. Do you have a, you have a favorite? I don't, know. I don't even, like I said, Talib Kweli ain't even a nigga I give a fuck about, but he said what he said. So my next question was going to be, do you have a favorite Talib Kweli song? You said what? Do you have a favorite Talib Kweli song? Um, You know it's 50 Cent. You know it's G-Unit. It's not high tech and it's not quality. Well, I know the song, The Blast. I think that's what your song you refer. They pronounce my name, Quali, that song. But 50 nah, Cent nah, made a- nah, 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 nah. 50 version though. Okay. I don't think it's I even not heard that. high tech and it's not quality. You know it's 50 Cent. You know it's you unit. Yeah, I like that shit. You sound like that nigga though. <laughs> you sound like that. I, I like that shit, you know what I mean? That's the one he liked. Okay, um, if you had a chance to speak face to face to Carly, what would you what you think would happen? What would you say? Um, he's like Charlie Polly, smart man. Like he knows what's going on. It won't be like much to say. We either like figure it out or we won't. Either way, I'm good. Do Do you think that our people or this culture forgets that this is really just entertainment? And, and, and base let me tell you why i say this base follow me on this one right i was watching a video of a band yesterday a real famous big ass band that's been around for a long time a band right and i noticed they got the violin they got it mic'd up just right they got all the instruments mic'd up just right because that band is concerned about the quality of the music that's being projected to the people. They really concerned about the entertainment of it. They take being entertainers seriously, right? So do we sometimes in hip hop, in this culture, even on the street, even if you ain't involved in hip hop, but you listen to it, do we forget that this shit is just really entertainment? Yeah. Yeah, nah, shit, that's what it is. But like people crazy and they high as hell and shit out here too. So like they get too caught up in this shit. 
But that be my thing. Like I be trying not to get too caught up in this shit, or 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 have my folks too caught up in this shit. So, given what recently happened to P and B Rock, do you think it's wise to go outside with your jewels on, especially in L.A.? I stay dangerous, and I believe in God, bro. But it's like certain shit. I probably wouldn't have been in that particular Roscoe's with all that shit on and all that if I wasn't prepared for some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Because Ice T. He said something about this recently, and he was just that like, "Yo," he said, "It's fifty thousand active gang members." He said, "Artists from LA don't be outside with the jewels on." Snoop, Game, him, he don't be out. Cube, them dudes was never wearing jewels because they know what it is out there. That makes sense too, though. You got to in Rome. You got to do it in Rome. It's like I was out in LA, and I wanted to go to a particular place. And my homeboy out there, like, he kind of in charge of me. Like, man, I don't really want to take you there. But if I do, you you, you got to take the jur- that jury off. Because you just end up being a target for thirsty cats. Cats still trying to make it. Hungry niggas. The wolves is out. Man, you, you got to be like, man, this shit a blessing, bro. Like, And it's like, I ain't like, you know what I mean? Like I said, I stay dangerous. I try to be on point and, and not put myself in situations to where I have a negative outcome. You feel what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, like, you like gotta, gotta be gotta careful be. out here. We going to a lot of different places. I'm always in somebody else's hood. What do you think the connection is between lyrics and real life violence, if, if there is any? I mean, some niggas really come from that shit. Like, it's like, what else we gonna talk about? Honestly, like, that's what's going on there where I live at. Like, so what I'm gonna talk about? Some shit that I don't know nothing about? Like, this is what niggas really be known. Like, this is what niggas really know, bro. Like, I ain't, like, never seen much different. I'm starting to see different shit now. But, like, you come up in this, and then you making music. Like, your your music is going mirror your experiences or, or what you're going through or what you done saw. Let me ask you this. Is it now a rite of passage to get a hook by Stove God Cooks or El Camino? Shit, it might be. <laughs> dudes is on fire with the hooks right now? Stove. Stove, stove that nigga. You'll want that. Boy, he everywhere. He yeah, everywhere. Listen, sense. and I'm just gonna say this, and I'm not saying this this is true about Griselda or anybody else. I'm just saying, if your song is a seven, if Stove God show up, he make it a nine and a half at least. I'm just saying. Stove yeah, God make everything nice. better. And if you're a smart nigga, you'll want to go from a seven to a nine and a half. Thank you. Thank you. Are you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. He like, gonna put that like season, bro, all over the place. Shout out to Stove too, like Stove, a good nigga, like, like, like Stove, motherfucking, told me like, yo, wherever I'm at, if you wanna show up, man, pop out. If an alien came down and I had to describe Fuego base to an alien, just based on your work, My what would that description said, sound like? Hey, you that nigga? That's it. You sure, they said describe the, the alien. Tell the alien I'm that nigga. Nah, but I mean seriously, you but. Uh, he that nigga is not a description for an alien. I gotta say, he goes, hey, well, who is Fuego Base? What is you sending me to? What What is you directing me to? What would I say about Fuego Base? Oh, no, nah, they, 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 honestly, the aliens, somebody go tell the aliens, you bumped into a good nigga, man. This is what I would say. I would say, real street dude on the mic, right? He's from the tree of what I would call Mob Deep. I'm not saying you sound like Mob Deep, but that nah, real- yeah, no, I come from that shit. I grew up on that shit. Yeah, that real street shit. You mean <laughs> grimy with some bars attached to it. You know what I mean? Voice is fucking clear. Even though it's got that gruff to it, you can hear every word the man says. That's what I would say to an alien. Ah, shit, I appreciate that brother coming from you. You know that, bro. I've been like, we've been talking for a while. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, you I mean, know what I'm saying? Like, I know you love this shit. Like, so, and I do that shit for niggas that love this shit. Yeah. So I mean, if, I, if I could get the cosign of a nigga that love this shit, I know I'm in the right direction, regardless of how big is. the person is. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, I respect it. Because these ears is golden. I've been on this shit since 79. Rock Kim was my was my number one MC for a long time till Nas came about. You know what I mean? So I know what the fuck I'm talking about out here. I respect that. Thank you. Listen, I know that Benny opened a lot of doors for the crew. Griselda did Coachella and shit like that. Um, what's been some of your memories so far being around this? Shit, I was just on the stage. I rolled in live. Oh, you was at that one too. Yeah. What, the, what was the energy like from the crowd at Rolling Loud? That shit was crazy. And then it was just crazy lights and shit. Like the lights was blinded. It was blinding me up there. I couldn't even see the crowd at one point. Like that shit was crazy. That shit was lit. That shit was turned. It was legendary. I haven't seen the video yet, but I assume when BSF came out, when Benny came out, the audience 
noise, right? Oh, no, nah, yeah, them niggas, they, they love, bro. Like, bro, fucking rock star, they love that nigga. Real talk, though. Real talk. They um, love that nigga. Them niggas go on fucking went crazy out that motherfucker. We was at the Firefly Festival the day before that shit. And they was going crazy out there. And I don't know no better, you know what I mean? So I'm like, damn, these white folks going crazy? They love that nigga. What some of your favorite Griselda records? What's that? The Dr. Bird shit. Man. I love that shit. That's my shit. And, um, damn, I forgot the name of it. It's on the, um, the Griselda ghost shit. Like the, like the shit with, with, with Conway. And motherfucking on West Side Gun. I forgot the name of that shit. But I love the cow too. Like the cow, the illest shit ever. The cow, so crazy. Yeah, you know I mean, like it's it's so much of that shit, man. It's hard to really, you know what I mean? Right. Niggas is dumping. I love that Benny shit, that cold November, that, that you know what I mean? Like shit like that. Like, like they got that my, shit. You know, one of my Benny shits is Dirty Needle. Remember the Dirty Needle shit? Yeah, hell yeah. What's that, 17 shots? Man. I, I, I don't give me the line because I I forget everything. Uh, it's the haze. So we, we talked about Ricky as being a multi talented cat. Uh, makes dope ass beats. He also raps. Um, he got an understated intensity in the way he delivers. What's his vibe like when it comes to working on music? Yeah, hell yeah! Like when you with that nigga, it's like that shit. Like that nigga like the new fucking Kanye or some shit. Like you know you got to really come with your shit. Like that guy never sounds bad. Artists nowadays have different streams of income. Um, you get the people get marketing dollars. I just saw Rock Marciano in a Timberland spot. Um, yeah. So think about this for you, right? Follow me. Fuego, Fago. What you think about that? Fuego, what? Fuego, Fago. What the soda? Yeah. Let's get you. A, let's get you a deal with Fago. It's gonna be Fuego. Fuego. Fue- Make that shit happen. Because fuego mean hot in Spanish, right? Say that. Fire. So it's going to be like, fire it's gonna, it's, it's like, like hot Cheetos. Thing. It's like hot Cheetos, but you drink the shit. So this is my rapid fire round right here. You got to answer these questions. Give me a quick answer. Uh, scissor or Sade? Scissor. Um, Frank's Hot Sauce, Red Devil, or Louisiana? Louisiana. Old school, sitting on chrome, or newer luxury whip? Newer luxury whip. How about Jimmy Superfly Snicker or Randy Macho Man Savage? Macho Man. Talib Kweli or Memphis Bleak? Memphis Bleak. Fuck Talib probably. Hey, hey, listen, Bad Boy had a hell of a run back in the day. Do you think you could have wore them shiny suits given what you know now? Hell yeah, I'm from the projects, bro. The shiny shoes with a couple dollars, I'm lit. We would have been showing up. <laughs> You'd have been doing a dance everything. Hell yeah. And fucking niggas up if they thought otherwise. When most people get pulled over for loud music, what draws the attention of the cops? Oh, no. Like, they don't pull us over for that shit around here. Okay, the answer is bass. What type of salary would I pay Donald Trump if I hired him to wipe my dog's ass on a daily basis? What type of salary? Man, my boy Trump ain't going for that shit. Uh, base salary is what I would pay him. Uh, what base was your homie? Salary, okay. what, what was your homie's? <laughs> what was your homie's hand when you got locked up? And it's also what Post Malone probably does every morning for breakfast. What? When you got locked up, what was your what was your homie yelling when you got locked up? And it's probably something that Post Malone do every morning. Oh, base. Free base. Yes. That's oh, what they were screaming. DJ. Free oh, base. Yes. Post Malone smoke butter? I don't. I'm, I said probably. Oh, I, all, right, all, right, all right. It's unconfirmed. It's alleged. <laughs> if you were in a limbo contest, what do you think the MC would say to you? In the limbo contest? Yeah. Get low, base. <laughs> he was say Base How low can you go Zing zing I was close If you were uh, Banished to a deserted island And could only take One album with you Outside of your crew What album would that be Reasonable doubt What if I was a genie And gave you three wishes What would you wish for Three wishes A bunch of money A bunch of guns And to get out of jail Free car How much money In the bank Would it take for you To feel really comfortable I never feel really comfortable. Mm. Mm. Why is that? You know why? 
Because we targeted, bro. It's always a target. Like, niggas like, you think these people want a nigga like me to get that money and shit like that, bro? It's always sign that they going to try, bro. So you can never be comfortable out here. It's a target on us. We black men. And, like, we, we becoming successful. You 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 got, you got children? You comfortable, you going to go out with, like, yeah, I got an 11-year-old daughter. Okay. So a large part of your motivation has to be to put her in a more comfortable position than what she is right now, right? She she's in it, but she's straight. Right, right, right. But you want? I mean, we as like parents, you, we want to do more and more, right? Like, like of course you want to do better, but it's like, 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 like she's in the like she's in a better position this year than she was last year. Right, right, right. And you want to see her you graduate. No, nah, yeah, she's in a whole new school system. Like everything's different right now for her. What you think about and Daddy being? What you think about Daddy being famous? Shit, she love it. She love music. She a lot like me. Shit, she play football and shit like that. Everything. That's what's up. Like, That's she's starting right receiver. She just scored a TD the other day. I need you to do me a favor. I'll be looking at Netflix. I don't. I don't know. Ain't nothing on the newly released shit that I wanted to see. Can you give me a Netflix recommendation? Something I should be watching? Do you watch Netflix? Uh, Netflix, Netflix. You don't watch Canaan in them? Oh, I, I do that on Stars. yeah. Last week they was oh, off. I, they go, Netflix, yeah. I don't yeah. know about Netflix. I don't be knowing what I really be watching. Like, I be watching shit. I don't know what, net, what network it is. <laughs> no, you, you you seen the last episode of um this this video gonna come out like in about two or three weeks, but the one recently oh, okay 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 was when um what's the dude name that be in the studio? I forget that That's guy Uncle name. Lou. Uncle Lou. He gave it to Al B. Shore's son. That nigga had it coming, did he not? Yeah, Al B. Shore's son. That's the second time because the first time he just choked him up a little bit. Yeah. So now he punched him in his shit. Next he fuck around kill Al B. Shore. Wait, didn't he kill him though in this episode? He put the chin around his neck and was like. That's what I'm saying. He choked him out before. Then the last time I seen him punch him in the face. I don't know if he did it to him. Yeah, I think, he, it, him. I think he killed him in the and studio. See, on I, missed I missed that. that. I must because because I think I fell asleep when the last one I was watching. So I must have missed that. I didn't know he did. I'll be sure. But I knew it was coming. You see what I said? Yeah. Next is going to kill him. Yeah, because yeah, the one time the, he threatened, he threatened, he threatened Uncle Lou with this. With, bro. He threatened him with the strap too. He said, "Who said I ain't but gonna see, use it?" But see, you see, you kill Alby. That nigga freaking. He kill Alby sure, but they ain't kill unique. <laughs> you know see, he missed. he missed when they sent him to get that nigga Wardell. Yeah, yeah, right. Wardell, right. Wardell should have been out of here, nigga. Now Wardell lining him up with unique again. Yo, he basically but, admitted he basically he basically admitted he to rock. Kill, kill, yeah, but he killed Al B. Shore over the bra. Al B. Shore son. Let's, yeah. Al B. Yeah. Shore Jr. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he killed him over the bra. That's really why he ain't like Al B. Shore Jr., man. Why did he ain't kill Wardell with them then? They killed him because he went to rock. <laughs> like, what, 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 they, the what they say about rock? Somebody said something about rock. Yeah, that's my sister. That's Ashton Dunn. Respect. How you doing? She said. She said he she, he um did it because she he went to rock. Oh. I forgot how be sure Junior did that, but I still say though he was really salty over the chick. Hey, but your sister know this. Your sister knows this. Rock told Lou about Al B. Shore's kid. Because she wanted that shit, that music shit to be broken up and fucked up. Of course. That's why she told Lou that shit. And then he went for it, though, and caught a body in the music game. You don't right. think they're going to look for Albie Shore Jr.? Then he's, then he's spoiling Kanan because he's like, that's not what we do. That's what she do. But Kanan Young, we got to protect the babies. She put that boy in all the way. Now, now you're trying to, you can't take him back now. Like, come on, you just had him hit a cop. Hey, was you, you seen when he blew down on that dude that robbed him for the bag? He wants, he wants to blow down on shit. You yeah. can't stop nobody like that. So you might as well put him down. It's the family business. You're doing it with your brother. Your son might be smarter and iller than your brother. You got to try him out. Uh, Fuego Base, listen, thank you for taking the time out of your day. I know you're a busy man. Salute to the whole BSF. I no, appreciate you as well, man. All right. Be safe, base. Say that, my nigga. What the fuck was poppin' is your boy Mike Powers? Mike Powers.